Hi, my name is Mark Biernant, and I'm an academic economist, specifically economic economist that studies monetary economics. In this video, I want to talk about the data coming out of Russia. There is a lot of claims that the economy in Russia has been growing despite the sanctions. In fact, I see numbers like 3.6% GDP growth with sanctions. I've seen others as high as 6, and they're all over the place. But let's stick with the 3.6 number. It appears, people say, to be coming from official or credible sources. And in this video, I'm going to prove, using objective, critical thinking, that they are incorrect. I can't definitively prove it, but I'm going to give you strong evidence. And at the end of the video, if you still think that 3.6 is the growth rate of the Russian economy under sanctions, you let me know. So let me tell you a story first. And this story is very relevant to this determinant criteria. All right, so go back a few years, and it was summertime in Florida, super hot. And I woke up one morning, and there was water gushing all over my floor. In this county, St. John's County, they use chloraminides. Okay, it's a combination of chlorine bleach and ammonia in the water in order to purify it. And one of the side effects is it's very corrosive on the pipes. We had copper pipes in the ground, in, in the concrete slab, and it broke. So, uh, you know, when my wife met me, she uh, was like, basically looked at me. I was reading Lord Byron on the bench with, you know, cargo shorts and a big American spy smile. And she's like, this guy, this guy's like a philosopher under the bridge. You know, everything's okay, but... But this guy doesn't get his, you know. So, the, so my wife was eight months pregnant when this happened. Water was everywhere. I had checked into a plumber before, and it was like $10,000 just in case I wanted to check. Because the neighbors had this happening. It's about, you know, once a house here gets over about 20 years older, the pipes uh, burst. I was, you know... I'm an academic researcher. I don't have that type of cash just to flip. And even if I did, I don't know if I'd want to spend it. So what I did is I just asked, I said, like, dear God, just help me out here because I'm in a real jam. And then my wife's looking at me and I'm like doing this. My eyes are blinking and I'm going like this, you know, back and forth. And then she looks at me and I told her, I know plumbing. Three days, I went up in the attic. It was in Celsius. It could have been 45 degrees. 50 degrees. It was up to 150 degrees Fahrenheit, which is insane. I was up in the attic walking on in, on planks. I put my uh, foot through the roof one time. Planks, drilling and soldering, taking, using this and this, making joints. And that moment, I was a plumber. I knew it. I replumbed my entire house, A to Z. Okay? A to Z. How did inspector guys come in over? They, they couldn't believe it. They said I did an amazing job better than the professional plumbing companies, okay? In that moment, I was a plumber. Somehow, it's like I downloaded the information to my brain, used packs, used joints, used crimp clamps. I just knew it all. And I was like weaving and dancing up in that attic, replumbing the whole house. I accidentally, I, incidentally, I did the same with my septic, with just a shovel. I used these infiltrator arcs. They're great, okay? Got an inspector, everything looks great. And you can do that. You, you can, as a homeowner, you can do your own things. So what does this have to do to ru with Russia? Am I just pontificating? No, it has everything to do with Russia. Because if they're claiming that 3.6% GDP growth and everything is great, yet 22.6% of the Russians do not have indoor plumbing. 67% of the countryside Russians do not have indoor plumbing. They use an outhouse, maybe. 18.7 don't have any way in the whole of Russia to remove, or it could be the countryside, to remove the uh, septic waste. That is crazy, okay? If, if Russia wants to become a better place, if we want to make the world a better place, we have to think about the people who live in this world. Also, this, let's say, growth rate, 3.6% growth, what is it on? I've seen numbers all over from 2.2, but I think more conservatively, their GDP, uh, 
PEED is about 1.7 trillion. That's nothing. That's jump change. Our U.S. military budget is is a little shy of that. And quite frankly, I would I'd, I'd give a trillion. To, uh, say that trillion goes to the oligarchs. So, Mr. Putin, if he wants to write a check, you know, let's put one trillion dollars to revamp the infrastructure of Russia, and let's start with plumbing because apparently the Russians don't have plumbing in their great, magnificent economy that doesn't have debt and. You know, they have gold reserves and oil and everything else and sparks and smoke coming out of these great factories. If he wanted to write that check, he couldn't do it. And his love buddies in North Korea, Iran and, and China, they could get good, you know, piping over. Or can they? He doesn't have the money to do that. He doesn't have the money to fix the plumbing. His solution to poverty is send the people to the Eastern Front, right? And not only that, I was in Russia, okay? I, you know, I lived in Eastern Europe much of my life. I'm an Eastern European citizen as well as an American citizen. And look at this. I saw pipes there that looked insanely toxic. Well, I'm talking lead, heavy lead pipes. I didn't test them there, but when I was here, I tested analogous pipes with lead testing kits. And the result was lead, lead everywhere. So if they have lead pipes in the plumbing that they do have, and a lot of people don't have plumbing, I mean, come on. It's like, you know, this is a scenario. If you want to romanticize about how great the Russian economy is, this is the real deal scenario because I've been to Russia. I've been all over, okay? The scenario is this. Hey, Steph, Lana, while you're in the outhouse, can you uh, bring a couple buckets of water? We need it in here. Oh, and don't forget to close the door to the outhouse. That's the reality. Is that the great <laughs> superior economy? So if you think... It, based on the statistics, based on official statistics and the Moscow Times reporting that over 22% don't have any indoor plumbing and 67% in the countryside don't have plumbing. If you think that the Russian economy is really growing at 3.6%, so if you think, if you think the Russian economy has low debt and 3.6% growth, I've got some swampland in Florida to sell you, right? And even if it, I would estimate the growth, it could be like negative 10% or more. I mean, even if you make the claim that, you know, military stimulates the economy, Keynesian argument. No, it doesn't. You're taking away from productive capital that could be invested in things like AI robots and plumbing, septic. These things are health problems. Lead pipes need to be remediated, right? Infrastructure. And yet, if the economy is so small, it's tiny, it's 1.7 trillion that's a pretty small economy in my book, okay? You know, if you add up EU and US, you make it over 50 trillion. So it's it's a small chump change, and they have, I would say, negative growth rates, and every single statement the Russian government makes is typically a falsification or fabrication. You guys didn't live under this Russian mirror, this Russian reality, this communism. You know, they would make st uh, statements about the five-year plan. They would say, this quarter, chocolate production went up 50%. Who's eating 50% more chocolate? Everything was a fabrication. Everything still is a fabrication. Any claims, any data coming out of there is a fabrication. And we can't test it. We are not there. But we can use, uh, you know, intuitive arguments that infer things. If I can fix my plumbing, you know, and I'm a Florida living in the swamp sky, academic researcher with no money, they can do it too, but there's a problem. They don't have any money. They don't even have $100 to buy some packs to do some crimp, uh, crimp joints. They can't, do, they can't do the plumbing because they don't have the money. Even if they went to the University of YouTube and figured out how to do it, the countryside doesn't probably even have the internet, maybe on their phones, barely. Maybe 2G or something crazy. So... There is no way you're going to convince me unless you show me data to the contrary. And I'm not just talking about, oh, I pulled it off the web, the largest receptacle of recycled information in the world. I'm talking about real data statistics. Other than that, from a guy who's done his own plumbing, from a guy who's done his own septic, and that I know that the Russian countryside doesn't have septic and plumbing, the reason that they can't do this is they don't have the money. Russia is bankrupt. You can say they don't have any debt. Are you sure? Are you sure about that? Okay, are you positive? Maybe they hide it in different ways or do funny things. They have 16% interest rates there. 16%.
if you go by the natural rate of interest theory of Knut Vixell, the profit rate would have to be 16%, then, uh, you know, the real rate of return on, on capital. And it isn't. It's probably negative. There is such a monetary and economic disequilibrium that if you're telling me 3.6% or, or the sanctions are doing nothing, I've got some swap land in Florida to sell you. Thank you very much. My name is Mark Biernott. Have a great day.